giving a lot of thought recently to energy. Why some people have it and others don't. How it explodes from some people and how you can't coax it from others. How it benefits those who have it and how it limits those who lack it. 16-year-old Mason recently confided that he had applied for his first job, a part-time job, and he had an interview and a call back from the second, for the second interview at the local Best Buy. Immediately, I launched into interview advice for this first-timer. You guessed it, firm handshake, communicate enthusiastically, speak up, no one-word answers. He'll do fine because he has energy in his voice, his body language, and his attitude. On the other hand, I coached a client a couple of weeks ago that was Mason's antithesis. Although a nice guy, he moved like molasses. And he had no idea why his career had stalled out at senior management when he'd set his heart on moving to the C-suite. Energy. His had evaporated. Consider political candidates those who can't communicate their message with conviction and energy on the stump just don't stand a chance. Think about your favorite talk show guests. Those who communicate passionately about their cause or their current project get invited back regularly. People with energy have an edge. So whether you're speaking up in a meeting, delivering a formal presentation, interviewing for a job, or simply holding up your end of a conversation. Participate enthusiastically. Approach people when entering a room rather than hanging back and waiting for others to approach you. Move. If you're making a formal presentation, don't just stand in one spot for a long time. Those who do just stand in a spot often lose all sense of natural body rhythm. They lock their knees or their arms and their breathing becomes very shallow. They lapse into a monotone and they, they, they sound pathetic. Don't let that happen to you. Stay conscious of the link between your movement and your lips. Walk to a different spot occasionally to deliver a new point. Use the entire conference room as your platform. Movement takes energy. The more energy you exert as you move, the more energetic and the natural your voice will sound. Never pace, of course. Standing still to make a point can be powerful. But movement, especially toward or among your audience members, engage them. And then gesture to package a point. Use your entire body if that's appropriate. Become your own prop when you need one. Animate your face. Look like your message is rest registering with your brain. And then vary your speaking rate. Vary your volume. Vary your intensity so that your listeners know what's important. Make others feel your energy as you drive home a point. Let them rest a bit. Then pick up the pace again. Modulate, modulate, modulate. If your listeners look bored, it's because you sound boring. Your energy can be a powerful tool to control a conversation, to command a crowd, to communicate a culture, and ultimately to create a career.